What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. This is the third and final episode in our three-part mini-series about the best vegetables to grow for certain skill levels. And congratulations, if you've made it to this episode, you are an advanced gardener, or hopefully you are, because that means you can grow all of these and all of these, which are what we're gonna talk about today. So this is, like I said, a three-part series. If you're just tuning in for the first time and you're a beginning gardener, make sure to go back to the first video. You'll really appreciate that video. If you're an intermediate gardener, anything from one to five, or two to five years, I should say, uh, you're gonna be able to watch the second video, which was our last video. And if you've been gardening for any more than, say, five years or so, you're considered an advanced gardener. And that means you have the skill level, or you should have the skill level if you've been learning from your garden, to grow all of these. So without further ado, let's jump into today's video. Let's get going. So the first crop for advanced gardeners are peanuts. Peanuts are so fun and so rewarding, but they are definitely tricky. The first thing you have to know is how to properly amend your soil. Peanuts need loose soil in order to form more peanuts. They also, you also need to know when to harvest them and when to plant them. Too early into the season and they're going to rot. Too late in the season, they won't form peanuts. If you don't know when to harvest them, you might pull up the plant and not have any peanuts formed. So it takes a lot of know-how and a lot of experience to know just when, you know, kind of those visual cues that you look for on when to harvest things. The next crop is celery. When it comes to celery, celery is, it's a very easy crop to grow if you're just using it as cutting celery. That's basically where you spread the seeds and you snip the leaves. That's not too difficult. What I'm talking about is store quality celery. You know, big fat heads, nice, uh, close, tight uh, stems. That is very challenging to do. If you don't know the process of blanching and you don't know what that is, well then you're not gonna be able to grow this very successfully. Utah tall celery is probably the easiest of them all because it's known as a self-blanching variety. That's where the stems tend to kind of grow up naturally to, uh, towards each other. And so it's gonna be easier than most to grow. But this still takes a lot of know-how and uh, we still even have a tricky time growing it from time to time. It is easier now that we've grown it successfully, but I would say it took about three to four years to master growing this. It also takes a very long growing season. This takes about 110 to 140 days, so it is a super long plant to grow. The next crop is corn. Now corn is tricky because corn requires a fair amount of space, so most small gardeners, they wanna grow it, but they don't have the space in order to grow it. What I'm talking about is you've got to have at least a minimum of 10 by 10. If you don't have 10 by 10, you can try growing 40 square feet. We tried growing 40 square feet of corn here at our house, but it's just not, it's just not sufficient. The amount that you're going to get from that small amount of space, it's just not worth the space that it takes up. So you have to be pretty invested into this whole gardening thing to have a 10 by 10 space where you're going to get good pollination, the plants are going to grow well, and you're going to get a decent harvest from it. You also have to know how to properly amend your soil because corn is a very heavy feeder. So if you don't know how to properly amend your soil and check for nitrogen levels and give them you know, a good nutrient dense growing medium for them to grow in, they're going to struggle. Also corn does take uh, some time. It does take some patience to know when it's right to plant because too early into the season, the seeds will rot. Too late into the season, it won't have enough time to mature and your corn won't develop the sweetness and the flavor that it would normally. So timing is everything. The next thing is onions. Now onions, as we've talked about, uh, are, they're, they're very, very tricky. Um, in the beginning episode for beginners, we talked about the, uh, the Tokyo long bunching onion. And the reason why that's great for beginners is because it's not a bulbing type onion. When it comes to bulbing type onions, you have to know, are you in a short day zone, a long day zone? And if you've been gardening for any length of time, you should kind of start to get to hear these terms and you should have your, you know, this should kind of ring a bell with you. So you should know if you're in a long day or a short day zone, and that's required to grow things like the crystal white wax onion or the Southport white globe onion. Now Southport white globe is marginally trickier than the crystal white wax, and that's because the size is quite a lot larger. So if you're looking, if you're an advanced gardener, you're looking for a challenge, try growing the crystal white wax. And I was torn you know, I was really torn whether or not I should put this in the intermediate category or not. But honestly, you still have to know those foundational things and that does not come within three or four years. 
I didn't know how to grow an onion successfully for at least five. So that's why I would still, I was gonna put these in each individual category um, when it comes to beginner, intermediate, and advanced, but then I thought, I didn't wanna set people up for failure. I would still really feel comfortable in an advanced level with you guys growing these because they are very tricky. Um, the other thing too is they, are, they take a long time to mature. So if you don't know how to grow them properly for a long period of time, they're gonna be stressed and they're not gonna form well. Also, um, like I said, if you plant a wrong onion in a wrong day zone, they're not gonna form at all. So you have to know those things going, going into planting onions. And also, you have to know when to start your onions. Starting onions happens in about two or three weeks here in Michigan, very, very early. So you also have to know how to start the seeds indoors. And if you don't know how to do that, you're gonna have a really tricky time. The next crop are artichokes. Artichokes are so difficult, but they are super rewarding. Now they start from seed very easily. It's keeping them alive and getting them to produce is the hard thing. So it took me actually uh, just shy of seven years to successfully grow artichokes. I started having success about two years ago. I was right at that fringe point of success where the plant was looking great, but I wasn't getting, getting any fruit and it was dying the year following. So it would just die throughout the winter. Then once I got a plant to overwinter, that's really where I saw the success. So you can make sure to check out our artichoke growing guide for more information. And uh, yeah, it's really fun, but it's definitely challenging. You also have to have a lot of growing time and a lot of space. They are, they're big plants. The next crop is cauliflower. Cauliflower is by far one of the trickiest crops to grow. Now, for whatever reason, take, take uh, broccoli, which we all know how tricky broccoli can be. Take broccoli, multiply it by like four or five. This is nearly impossible. When it comes to getting beautiful white cauliflower, I still cannot get it. This is in my top 10, probably hardest plants to grow. It's probably, in my list, it's probably in the top three. I still struggle to grow cauliflower because it takes a lot of maintenance. You have to keep it super pest free. The sun actually ends up turning the, the white of the cauliflower yellow, dingy yellow, um, like, like a deer was walking in snow and decided to take a little piddle, that type of yellow. It's not pleasant and it's really not very nice looking. And so you have to learn how to blanch it properly. A lot like with celery, you have to know how to blanch it. This is called self blanching. I don't care what the name says, it's still really tricky. That's very, very difficult to grow. Lavender. Now you have to know how to grow lavender, uh, or you have, to, you have to know how to grow lavender in order to grow lavender. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> oh man, I'm having a good day. I hope you are as well. Okay, so you have to know how to properly stratis, uh, stratify seeds in order to grow lavender. That's because lavender, it needs to be cold stratified in order to germinate. You can't just take these seeds and throw them in the soil and expect them to sprout, because they won't. What you have to do is you have to put them in a damp paper towel. We have a video on what is cold stratifying and, and how to do it and what seeds require it because um, it, is, it is a prerequisite to getting these to sprout. You have to know how to cold stratify your seed and you also have to know how long to do it because if you do it too long, they'll rot. If you don't do it long enough, it won't matter. So it's all about timing, it's all about method and you, you can do it, but it's tricky. It's very, very tricky. That's why I always recommend for beginning and intermediate gardeners, before you know how to do those things, start with plants. It's definitely way easier. The next lettuce here is the trickiest lettuce of them all, and that is iceberg. Now, iceberg is tricky. We have only gotten iceberg to grow successfully once for us. And that's not because it's terribly difficult, any more difficult than, say, a romaine lettuce. If you can grow romaine, you can grow iceberg but it comes down to timing. If you plant it too late, it goes to seed. If you plant it too early, it doesn't really do anything. It is timing, timing, timing. And that's why we only start a handful of iceberg lettuce plants because, um, well, to be honest, we've only, like I said, out of probably seven or eight attempts to grow iceberg lettuce, we've only had it grow successfully for us once. Other than that, we've had it for leaves. And that's why, you guys have seen our garden. We pretty much grow leaf lettuce exclusively because it's so easy to grow and I don't have to worry if it's gonna turn out. I just cut leaves and, and we're good. But when it comes to iceberg lettuce, it is tricky. The next thing that's very difficult is watermelons. Now watermelons are, they're just, frustrating would be an understatement. 
at least here in Michigan. You know, for places down south, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, places like that where it's hot and humid, uh, Arkansas, um, they're, they're very easy, very, very easy to grow watermelons. But you still have to know when to harvest them. If you don't know what you're looking for, you can't go by the thud test. If you don't know what the thud test is, you don't know how to look for the right tendrils to be dry. You don't know how to test the, the tenderness of the stem and the color of the stem. You know, if you don't know those things, if you don't know how to check the bottom to look for the right color of the belly, if you don't know how to do any of those things, there is about a 99.9% .9 chance you're going to harvest a white watermelon. And I don't mean white in that it's supposed to be white. What I mean is that it's bitter, it's pithy, it's unripe, and it's because you harvested it too early. So if you don't want to do that, uh, it's going to take some time to learn how to grow watermelons. Now, obviously, practice makes perfect. So at a certain point, you have to feel like you have the confidence to try watermelons, but once you try it, don't be surprised if you don't grow them successfully for a few years. We grew our very first successful watermelon this year. Well, last year, last season. And, uh, and it was our first successful watermelon legitimately in our entire life. It took a lot of practice, a lot of learning, and it definitely comes down to timing. Because we would have had successful uh, watermelons prior, but we kept harvesting them too early. So it's definitely a timing thing for sure. And it also has a timing with how long your season is. The next thing is, how'd that seed get in there? Oh, that doesn't count. That was actually seed I was germinating for our grow room downstairs. Somehow that ended up in here. Maybe my semi gardener came across it and was like, he probably is gonna need this for a video. <laughs> God, I love her. Okay, anyways, let's get on to the next one here. And that is spearmint. This is the final one. Spearmint is super, super, super tricky to grow from seed. It's not difficult whatsoever to grow from an actual plant. So if you're a beginning or intermediate gardener, grow from a plant. But when it comes to uh, spearmint from seeds, it is tricky. In fact, it's probably the trickiest seed to germinate out of all of them because the germination rate is already low. We're talking like 60 to 70% germination. Of those that sprout, you, they are so small. The seeds are so microscopically small that you have to do everything right in order to not let that tiny little seedling dry out. Water has to be ideal. If it's too much water, it's gonna rot. If it's not enough, it's gonna dry out. Temperature has to be perfect. If it's too hot, it's gonna dry out. If it's too cold, it's not gonna grow fast enough. Um, what else? Um, not enough light, it's not gonna grow at all. It's gonna get stressed and it's gonna die. Um, too much light, not really an issue. But if you're starting them indoors, which you have to because of how long they take to germinate and grow, you have to have lighting dialed in. Um, the other thing is uh, when it comes to um, growing them is you also have to know how to contain them. A beginning gardener can let their garden run absolutely rampant with, with uh, spearmint or any type of mint and it takes over and then they hate themselves. So you have to know how to contain something like mint by putting it in a container or learning how to uh, make a, a root barrier so they can't spread. We'll have videos on that in the following uh, growing season. But you can't just plant these and expect to have success. You definitely have to know how to grow them and you definitely have to have some level of experience in order to grow them successfully. So those are all the plants that are best for the advanced level gardener. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really hope that you in, uh, enjoyed and learned something new. If you did, make sure to share in the comments box below something that you found informative and fun. And also, uh, you know, let me know your gardening experiences. Has this series been pretty accurate to what you have found? And did I miss anything that you'd like to share with other people? All right. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll see y'all later.